Let's take a look at the transform menu in the Harmony Wizard toolbar. All the commands in this menu are for changing existing chords. The commands in the menu are toggle major minor, relative chord, median chord. These are music theory terms, but if you don't know what they mean, don't worry. The idea is that you can easily experiment with them and see if you like the result. This also applies to the next two. Move up in circle of fifths and move down in circle of fifths. This basically transposes the chords a fifth up or down, but automatically inverts them to keep them as close as possible to the original chord. Change chord voicing. These are different commands and macros to change not the chords themselves, but the voicing of your chords. So the chord notes stay the same, but the inversion and the octaves of the different notes change. For example, if you want to turn your piano chords into string chords or choir chords or guitar chords, these help you to change the voicing. And this command, create guitar chords, I've already shown in another Harmony Wizard video. So let's try out the different commands in the menu. And for that, I have created a little chord progression, which sounds like this. Now let's solo this track to listen only to the chords. I'd like to change this chord here, this D flat major chord. So let's select it and go into the transform menu and let's try out the first command and this will turn the chord from major to minor. It's interesting, but not really what I want in this situation, so let's undo it. Let's try out the relative chord. This sounds quite decent. Now you may see that as we are changing the chords here, these chords in the chord track are not longer correct. But here's another feature that we can use which is really useful, and this is the chord display. This shows us in real time which chords we are creating here. By default, it shows us the chords from the chord track, but what I want is that it shows us the chords of the notes we have here. So, as soon as I change a note, for example, when I press undo or redo, then it updates the chord here in the chord display. Now let's listen to the chord again. And now the change we made. As you can see, when I click on relative chord again, it will change it back to the original chord. Now let's try median chord. The median chord is apparently F minor. That sounds actually interesting. Let's hear it in context. This E flat major chord, mm, let's try to turn it into a minor chord. Mm, I actually like the other variation better. Let's again do median chord. Okay, and now relative chord. And let's see where this takes us. Perhaps let's try to replace this chord as well. Mm, let's take the relative chord. Again, you don't need to know what this does exactly. Just try it out and see how you like the result. That's the idea of Harmony Wizard. Here we could make this a minor chord as well. This sounds a bit traumatic, but why not? But let's also change this E flat major chord here. And now it's minor, and now we can do a relative chord again. And let's hear how that's gonna sound. I really like this so far. 
Now I find it a bit annoying that these chords here in the chord track are totally outdated. But it's easy to update them with our new chords. What you can do is just select the notes and drag them onto the chord track. The circle of fifths commands I'm going to demonstrate in a separate video, so let's go straight to the voicing macros. Why do I say macros instead of commands? Because they are not the same thing. Commands are the basic functionality in Studio One that only software developers who have worked on Studio One can create. But macros are just presets that execute different commands in a row and you can create macros yourself, it's quite easy. And in this case, I've already prepared some macros in Harmony Wizard for you, but of course they use Harmony Wizard commands, so they wouldn't be possible without Harmony Wizard. And if you want, you can create your own presets and extend Harmony Wizard with your own macros. If you want to dive deep into it, you can do that, but if you say creating macros is not for you, you can just use this menu. Let's start with the first one, Drop2 voicing. Drop2 is an arrangement technique and it means that when you have a chord, you take the second voice from the top and drop it down an octave. And as you can see, that's exactly what's happening. Why is Drop2 so great and what is it used for? Well, this is a normal piano chord in a closed position. But when you arrange strings, for example, it sounds much more open if there is more space between the notes. And certain intervals sound particularly good with strings or with choir or other sounds. I think that sounds much more interesting than the chord in a closed position. And so that you don't have to mark and transpose the second voice, this macro does it for you automatically. Here's another tip. You can see some repeated notes here. To make the whole part sound even more like an orchestral arrangement, you can join the repeated notes. Harmony Wizard has a function for this as well and that's merge chords. What makes it sound so sophisticated is that the notes don't all change at the same time, but sometimes only two notes change and the other note changes later. Just like a string arrangement. Okay, the next marker here is drop 2 plus 4 and as you might guess, it transposes the second and fourth notes in the chord down an octave. But as you can see, our chords only have three notes, so this won't work here and that's why I've added the note only for four note chords. So to be able to use this macro, we need four note chords. But that's no problem because we can just use the next macro in the list double melody one octave above. What this does is it takes the melody, the melody is the highest voice of all the chords, and it just copies it and puts it on top of the chord one octave above the melody. That's nice for strings, but it's also nice for piano or basically any sound because it accentuates the melody. And now that we have four note chords, we can turn them into drop two and four voicings. And this will sound like this. And let's demonstrate the next macro as well, double melody one octave below. Mm -hmm. 
Now we have the melody tripled, doubled in three octaves. I personally think twice is enough. If you double the melody even more often, it doesn't sound quite so balanced at some point, but of course you can do that. What I think makes more sense in this case is to double the lowest note. And this is what the next macro does. Double lowest note one octave below. That's useful because in string arrangements, the basses and the celli often play the same note, but in octaves. So that's what you can easily do with this macro. The last macro in the menu is create accent on top note. And this can be really useful for piano chords, because when a pianist plays chords, he often tries to play the highest note, the melody, a bit louder than the other notes. That emphasizes the melody and makes the whole chord sound more nuanced and in my opinion it just sounds more musical. So what the macro does is it selects the highest voice of all the chords and makes the top voice a little louder and all the other voices a little quieter. You can see that this happens here in the velocity lane. So this is how you can use the transform menu, which is part of the Harmony Wizard add-on for Studio One. And don't forget that if you have created a nice chord progression and you have updated your chord track, then you can easily create a bass line, just add a bass synth and select bass line and create bass line from chord track. This might be a bit too low, so let's take it up an octave. And our arrangement with strings, pad and synthways is ready. <laughs> 